Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Today my goal is to share with you some advice that I wish I had gotten when I started out my reselling journey. So first of all, if you are not sure that reselling is for you, give it a try. If you're intimidated by it or you're not sure how eBay works or Poshmark works, don't be afraid to watch videos on YouTube or Instagram or to reach out to other resellers. Maybe locally you can find some or just just try. You never know until you try and sometimes we are so good at building up something in our mind and making it seem more intimidating than it is. You might be surprised when you actually try it and find out that it's something that you love. So first off is just being brave enough to try something new. The other thing I want to share with you is to find your niche. You want to do as much research as you can on whatever it is that you're interested in reselling. Personally I sell clothes because they're easy to store and they're easy to ship. I have tried other things in the past and there are times that I absolutely regret when it comes time to ship them because it's a fragile item or I need to find the right size box for it. But with clothing, it's a poly mailer or a bubble mailer or if it's Poshmark, you can send them in the priority boxes that you're allowed to do with that platform. So you wanna make sure whatever it is you're selling that you love it because if you don't love it, it's gonna make listing it a lot harder or you're gonna dread it, you won't wanna do it, it'll sit in a death pile You'll be looking at it and thinking, why did I pick that up? So if it's something that you enjoy selling or you have a lot of information about it, background information, go ahead and do it. That, that's your niche. You want to get started somewhere. And as time goes on, you might find out that there are other things that you enjoy selling as well. So for example, my son likes Hot Wheels cars and he has quite a few of them. And he was going through them one day and said, Mom, I'd love to sell these in a garage sale. And I told him, well, it's not the right time of year for a garage sale. Maybe we can sell some of those on eBay for you. So he took the pictures, I helped him get them listed on eBay, and he sold a few of them, and that was very encouraging for him, and that was extra money for him to set aside for whatever it was that he was working on saving. So you never know where your reselling adventure might take you and what you start selling. There are things that you might find out that you enjoy photographing more, or it's easier to ship, or whatever the case is. So spend some time figuring it out what it is that you want to sell. My third piece of advice is for you to be patient, especially if you're first starting out. It's hard. It's really hard. But as long as you're listing consistently, you will get sales. Now, other factors may affect that, per se. Maybe the economy isn't doing so well, so your sales aren't as good as they used to be. But keep listing. There's different quarters in the year. So right now, I think we're in quarter four, which is a holiday season, and that's considered very busy. But then you're going to get to summertime, and that slows down. Everybody's busy being outside, being with their families, enjoying the summer, and you won't sell as many items depending upon what it is that you're selling. But there are different quarters and there's different seasons even in the reselling business. So keep an idea of that and just make sure that you're listing consistently and you will have sales. I remember when I first started out, I think I had maybe 50 listings and I would go every single night and I would look and see how many views I had on an item or how many watchers there were. And it can be addicting. You can end up being on your phone a lot more than you need to. So just be patient. Take that time. It's okay. You will sell things as long as you're listing consistently and your prices are good. You will sell them. So yeah, just remember to be patient. It's okay to feel maybe a little frustrated at times, but as long as you're putting the effort in, it does pay off. My fourth piece of advice is once you start getting multiple listings and you have them built up, say you've been doing it for five or six months, you wanna check those listings and you wanna end and sell similar. So basically you have two options when you end an item. You can go in, you should have so many listings. You wanna make sure that you're using your free listings. You don't, if you're paying for a store, you should have so many built in that are free. But if, you, if it's going to cost you money, don't do this. But my advice would be to end and sell similar. And when you do that, it's going to boost your listing back up into the newly listed and maybe help the eBay algorithm to push that listing forward so that people see it. And hopefully it'll help you sell. And someone mentioned that it's like cleaning out your closet. It gives you that opportunity to look at the listing, make sure your photos are good. If they're not, re retake your photos. You need to update them and make them look better so that people want to buy them. Maybe check your title and see if you have the size in there. Maybe you left that out. Check your listing information and make sure that that's all up to date and it's accurate. You want to make sure that your pricing is good. Go ahead and drop it by a dollar or two if it sat there for a while. Your goal is to move items. It's not to be a storage facility. You don't need a lot of stuff sitting around. So if you 
have old items that are sitting, there's a reason why. Maybe it wasn't good quality, give that time to assess and take it out of your closet. Maybe redonate it or give it to someone you know will enjoy it. But go ahead and, and end and sell similar and that'll help boost you up. Basically all that does when you relist an item is it maybe refreshes it a little but it keeps everything the same. You keep your watchers the same, you're not making it appear as a new item. So from what I understand, if you're wanting to try and go ahead and move things, it's probably better to do the end and sell similar rather than keeping your watchers. At least that's in my opinion. A lot of times people that are watching it, they've been watching it for a while. They are waiting for you to drop the price drastically or they're just wanting a really great deal and they, they didn't get it. I know I'm probably guilty of putting things on my watch list and not buying them right away because I'm like, oh, that's a great thing. Maybe I'll get it you know, later, but then I forget about it. So I can be guilty of that as well. So you just want to hopefully find someone who will buy your item outright. So my fifth tip is to figure out your inventory system. Spend the time watching videos on YouTube or talking with other resellers or whatever it is you need to do to figure out how you want to store your items because it won't take long for you to get a decent amount of items and whenever you go to find that item after it sells, there is nothing more frustrating than going through bins and bins and bins trying to find whatever piece of clothing it is or say it's another item that you can't find because it's you know a book or it's in a, in a pile and you can't find it. It's frustrating. It's so frustrating when you can't find it and eBay does not like whenever you have to say that you can't find an item that that impacts your store negatively so you want to take the time to research and figure out how you want to store your items it, it it's worth it. it it pays off in the end i know when i first started out i would just have my clothing in bins without anything and there are other sellers that do that but i found out it wasn't working for me i was constantly searching through a bin and being like oh maybe it's in the wrong thing and just it was wasting so much time or i couldn't find it so I started putting them in a plastic sleeve and then I would have an inventory number and I would put them in a numbered bin and then I would put that in my SKU when I was listing the item. And that really cut off a lot of time. So basically what you wanna do when you're a business owner is to make sure you are using your time wisely because your time is valuable. I know for me, my time is valuable as a mom. I'm trying to make sure that I spend time with my kids. I'm able to get things done around the house and still find time for me to be able to resell. So that time is very valuable because if I have to use that time searching for an item instead of listing, I'm missing out on money that I could be making. I'm missing out on potential profit. Okay, number six. This may be very obvious, but watch other reseller videos on YouTube. There's a lot of how-tos on there. There's a lot of just day in the life vlogging type things. There is so much information that you can find online on YouTube. I know I enjoy watching videos. There are some written articles and there's some Instagram things that are helpful too, but I learn best by watching a video and it's a constant. I'm still watching videos. I'm still learning. I'm learning new brands. I'm learning new practices. I'm learning shipping policies and I can see my business growing and maturing because I've learned the basics and so now I'm ready to move on to the next level. But the YouTube videos you watch, it's essentially free on the job training. Take advantage of it. Spend time watching videos. Put it on in the background while you're listing or while you're cleaning. I know my husband spent some time there for a little while reselling things at a farmer's market, but he spent so much time watching YouTube videos on how to grow market greens and how to get them ready and all the things that he could do and make sure he was prepared for it before he started and it paid off. And I know I was hearing it and I was learning a lot about it too. So take advantage of YouTube and the, and the information that resellers are putting out there for you. Other YouTubers are giving you for free. Take advantage of it. Number seven, while you're watching all of those YouTubers and they're giving you the information, potentially if you're doing clothes, you want to take photos of whatever it is, whether it's a clothing tag or if they're showing you an item, a toy or something that they've sold or a book, go ahead and take a photo of that item, pause your TV, take a photo of that item and then put that photo in an album on your phone called Bolo or brands to look out for or whatever it is. You can also make a notes in your phone and add it to that. But there's different options that you have and that'll help you when you're outsourcing to be like, oh, that looks familiar. Let me let me see if I remember that. And you can go back and check in your free time if you want. You have some time, you'll be like, oh yeah, I wanna make sure maybe I can find this brand, but I need to refresh myself on what it looks like because clothing tags can look different. So that's another tip I have is maybe just 
making sure that when you're given those resources, have them someplace that you can see. You know, it's just like going back and looking over at your college notes or notes from a class that you've taken. You need to refresh your memory sometimes. So you can do that, whether it's by photos or you can leave just have notes of brands that you wanna look out for in your phone. Tip number eight, pick one platform and become an expert at it. There are a lot of different options for reselling, whether it's you wanna start out with Poshmark or you wanna start out with eBay, but pick one and know how it works inside and out before you go and try a different one because it can get overwhelming very fast when you're trying something new. I know personally I started out with eBay. There's a lot more people that are on eBay that use that consistently. It's been around for a long time. I love Poshmark. I started recently using it and I know I can do more with Poshmark. It's just getting there. But if you don't understand how one works fully and then you add another one to it, you're bound to make mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes can be costly, whether it's you don't ship your item out on time or you don't have that item, you actually sold it on another platform but you forgot to delist it. Those can become costly mistakes. So my main platform that I love to sell on is eBay. But I've added Poshmark because clothes, they can take a while to sell. So if I can get more eyes on my item, that's a great thing. But that's not something that I started doing until you know, well into two years of my reselling journey. And that's probably because I'm part-time, but I also understand eBay really well now, and I'm learning how to use Poshmark better. So just make sure that you know whatever resource you're using very well, because there can be detriments whenever you make mistakes. Sometimes they're more costly. So for example, on eBay, if you don't ship out your item on time, your rating goes down and that can cause your store not to show up in as many listings whenever people are searching for items. So you don't want that. You wanna make sure that you're on time and you know what you're doing and you have everything where it should be. Whereas on Poshmark, they're a little bit more lenient with things. So whatever it is, just make sure that you know how your main platform works. Tip number nine. When you have the funds available, go ahead and invest in a thermal printer. It makes things so much easier, especially if you're shipping multiple items. I know when I first started out, we didn't even have a printer. I had to go to the library and print off my labels. That was worth it for me because we didn't have space for a printer, we didn't have the funds to buy a printer, and the library wasn't too far away, but it was also a pain. I personally have a Rolo printer and I, I really love it. It works well for me. It's a breeze to get labels printed and it's super fast. And it's nice that I don't have to worry about taping it down and making sure I don't cover the barcode and all the things that can be a hassle with that. So go ahead and set those funds aside and prioritize getting a thermal printer. It can make a big difference whenever you start having to ship out more than one item a day. My last piece of advice when you're starting out is to be smart and keep your funds separate that you earn on whatever reselling platform. So you wanna make sure your profits are kept in a different bank account or whatever it is. That way you know how much money you're making and you can track all of your transactions and you keep your receipts because it won't be fun come tax time if you haven't done the work of making sure that you keep things separate from your personal account. And it doesn't take much to get started. You don't need to have a bunch of money set aside. You could start out with $20. You could start out with $50. You could start out with things from around your home. You could start out with things from relatives that they don't want anymore and they passed on to you. It doesn't have to be anything crazy for you to get started. So don't let lack of funds keep you from getting started. But when you do start to get money from your business ventures of reselling, make sure you're smart and have everything set aside so that you know where your paperwork is and where your money has gone so that you can make tax season a lot easier on yourself. Hopefully you found this information helpful. I know these are some things that I wish I had heard. It's, it's maybe basic information, but it's also I never thought about ending my items and relisting when I first got started because I didn't think that that was a good thing to do. But it definitely, I know when I've done that, it's it's increased viewers and it's helped me move items that have sat for a while. So take the time to do your research and hopefully this information has helped make your reselling journey a little bit easier. If you have any questions or you aren't sure about how to sell on eBay or Poshmark or you would like a more in-depth video on any of these topics or things that I've covered, please leave me a comment below. I would love to help share the information that I've gained over the years and pass it on to you because I know that was very helpful for me when I was first starting. And like I said in the beginning, if you have been afraid of reselling, don't be afraid. It is so fun. It is absolutely worth it. And I hope that you have the courage to try something new. And go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I have new videos that come out. Thank you for sticking with me. This has been a lot of fun and I'm glad that I could share what I've learned over the years with you. Until next time, bye.